When David had finally defeated all of his enemies, he wrote a song of thanksgiving. We have it recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 22. He also has it quoted in Psalm 18, but here in verse 30, he writes, For by thee I have run through a troop, by my God I have leaped over a wall. It must have been some troop and some wall for David to record this. So we don't know the specific story. It may have been the taking of the city of Jebus, which became Jerusalem. I don't know the history behind this, but I do know that he recognized that God gave him superhuman help in order to accomplish this. When we come to the New Testament, Paul talks about this, God opening doors into new areas for the gospel's sake. And I wanted to tell a very special story today because our friend, Brother Ray Lynch, went home to heaven this week. Uh, you can be sure that he could sing a song like this when all his enemies have been defeated. And in other stories, we've told about his conversion and also some of his work in Israel. But he was at an all-night prayer meeting, I think in Europe, uh, where they were praying for the Muslim world. The sad story of the Muslims is that though they are very sincere, and I have many dear Muslim friends, there are some things they just don't have. They don't have a savior. They don't have assurance of sins forgiven. They aren't sure that God is for them, that he's their friend, or that he hears and answers their prayers. And so, in many ways, they live a kind of isolated life from God. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to share with them how they, too, could find that, that intimacy and that freedom and that peace and joy and forgiveness that can only be found in the one whom they call a prophet. And the Bible calls a prophet, but also calls God the Son. Well, Brother Ray, in that prayer meeting, he, he prayed and he said, Lord, he had heard that the top man in the Muslim world is the, the prince or Sharif of Mecca. And he's responsible for the holy sites there, the most holy place of the Muslims. And so he said, Lord, please send someone to take the gospel to the prince of Mecca. Uh, the Lord said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that would include him. And so he was praying this and he said, Lord, if you want me to go, I know it could cost my life, but I'm ready to go. And uh, George Verwer, who was in the meeting that night, called out, you heard him, Lord. <laughs> well, sometime later, he was in North Africa and he decided maybe I'll go into the Saudi embassy here and see if I could get a, a way in. But they told him, no, we don't take tourists. The only way you could get into Saudi Arabia is if you had a special letter by a person of significance in Saudi Arabia inviting you to come. Well, he thought he would take a little cheroot, a shared taxi across North Africa to Cairo and try again there. They were driving along through the desert. They came to an oasis. They pulled off the road and they were sitting there by the oasis when suddenly they saw a young man on a big motorcycle hurtling across the desert and he saw them and he pulled over beside them and said that he'd lost his way and needed help and could the driver direct him out to the main road and the driver said yes we'll be leaving in just a minute you can follow us out. Well the young man sat down beside Ray Lynch and uh, as they talked Ray Lynch found out that this young man was from Saudi Arabia. Well, he said, I want to go to Saudi Arabia, but they told me at the Moroccan embassy that I can't go unless I have an invitation, a letter from a person of significance in Saudi Arabia. And the young man said, well, here, I'll write you a letter. And he said, well, who are you? He said, well, I'm the son of the chief of security for the Prince of Mecca. And so sitting there in the desert, pulled out some correspondence, and this young man wrote a letter inviting Ray to come and visit him at his home. 
And so soon they got back in their vehicles. The young man followed them out, and once they got to the highway, he zoomed ahead. And so eventually they toddled into Cairo. So with this new letter now, he went down to the Saudi embassy, showed them the letter, and immediately received his visa to enter the country. He then went out and bought a beautiful Bible. It was um, uh, olive wood carved covers, gilt edges, a beautiful presentation Bible, and he wrapped it up in a cloth and put it in his suitcase and had no idea how he was going to get across the border into Saudi Arabia with this Bible. They will confiscate them at the border. But when he got down to the boat to take him across to Saudi Arabia, what do you know? Here's the young man on the motorcycle. And he says, I'm so ashamed. Why didn't I invite you to travel with me? And he said, you can come along with me. And so once they got across to Saudi Arabia, Ray got on the back of the motorcycle, and away they went. And when they got to the border, the young man just waved, and they rode on through. And so Ray arrived in Riyadh, the capital, where the chief of security had this beautiful home. And he was shown a lovely bedroom, and he was treated like a guest of honor. They had a lovely supper and so on. Well, the next morning, Ray decided it was time to go and see if he could visit the Prince of Mecca. And so with his contraband, the special gift Bible wrapped up in a cloth, he made his way to the palace. But when he got to the palace, the security there said, oh no, your pass won't help you today because this is Ramadan. And during this time, everybody goes and lives out in these lavish tents silk tent cities out in the desert and uh, he's not here he's out at the tent city so your your pass won't get you in there i'll have to write you another one well ray didn't have a pass to get in the palace but now he had a pass to get into this uh, tent city and you know the reason ray told us this story i had a group of young evangelists down in california and I said to him, could you tell us a story that shows that God can open any door? And this is the story he told. It's not in his autobiography. This is the story. And so he goes to the tent city. He shows the past that he's received over at the palace, and he's allowed in. And as he walks across the, uh, the courtyard, a man comes to him and says, what are you doing here? And he says, well, I'm here to see the Prince of Mecca. And the man says, well, do you speak Arabic? No. Well, he only speaks Arabic. But he said, I'm a translator for the ambassador, and I will translate for you. And so they arrive at this tent, and seated in this lavish tent are all these members of the royal family and these mullahs, and uh, there's the Prince of Mecca. And so they go up to him, and everyone is silent. They're wondering who this stranger is that's walked into the tent. When Ray begins to speak, he doesn't know much Arabic, but he recognizes right away that this man is not translating what he says. And he says, why are you not translating what I'm saying? And the man says, well, I don't want to embarrass the Prince of Mecca. So Ray turned to all the others and said, surely there's someone here who has the courage. If this is going to cost my life to do this, I want to be able to explain why I'm doing this. And in giving this Bible to the Prince of Mecca, he said to him, this is the most precious gift I could ever give you. And the Prince of Mecca asked and said, why would you throw away your life to do this? And Ray said, well, Jesus transformed my life. He changed my life. And I just have to tell everybody how wonderful he is. Well, he said, I still don't understand why you would forfeit your life to do such a thing. And Ray said, well, suppose I had the, uh, the cure to cancer. And you had cancer, and I wouldn't tell you the solution to your problem. What would you think of that? Well, that would be horrible. That would be a terrible thing. And Ray said, well, you have something worse than cancer. Cancer will kill your body, but sin will damn your soul, and you need a Savior. And I know the Savior, and that's why I came to tell you. You know, for about 15 minutes, Ray was able to explain the gospel to that whole room full of the leading people in the land of Saudi Arabia. And when it was finished, 
he turned to walk out of the tent, and as he was walking, he was sure there would be shouts and calls to arrest him, but it was like they were in suspended animation. And he walked right out of the tent and back to the house. By this time, he'd outlived his welcome, of course, and he gathered up his few things. And the, the young man on the motorcycle and his younger brother took Ray out to the main road where he was going to catch a bus out of Saudi Arabia. They sat by the side of the road watching the sunset, having tea, and the young man said to Ray, you know, um, I was at university in the West this last year, and I ended up with a roommate who was a Christian. And it shook my faith. And I realized he had something better than I did. But I knew if I became a Christian, my father would have me killed. And so he said, I've been partying all summer across all Europe, trying to forget what he told me. And when I sat down beside you at that, at that oasis, you took up where he left off. Ray said, I don't know if the young man got saved that day. I think his younger brother did. But what an amazing story. And it just reminds us, by my God, I have leaped over a wall. Just because there are walls there doesn't mean that God can't give us super natural ability to leap over them or to run through a troop. It sometimes seems impossible, but Paul was able to preach the gospel to Caesar. <laughs> oh yes, Nero. He preached the gospel to Nero. He was able to preach the gospel to um, the rulers of the Middle East. Daniel was able to preach to Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. But God is able to open doors. May the Lord help us to trust him and to look for those opportunities and to pray for boldness and courage that in this day we may preach the gospel to every creature.